laid the groundwork in the first hour. And people were wondering, what the hell are these guys on about? If you've been following along up to this point, now we've laid the groundwork saying that what you think is the financial system and how it works is not how it works, is not the real financial system. There are two dollars. There is domestic dollars and then there is offshore dollars. The euro dollar system is a leftover, right? A, a relic. Unfortunately, it's a relic that has turned into a monster. The Marshall Plan. 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 When we did World War II, we did something that was impossible. We did a war, a really big one, and then we did economic prosperity immediately afterwards. And that sounds pretty stupid, but those two things aren't supposed to go together. In fact, every nation in the history of nations, whether they use gold or whether they use puka shells or paper currency, after a war, you get inflation, a lot of it. And we fought the biggest war that anyone has ever fought ever. Like, yes, the Soviets did more dying, frankly, a good thing. But what was not a good thing is all the money that we spent. What a lot of people don't know is how much we were supporting the Soviets long before we entered the war. Lend lease was about a hundred times bigger than anybody thought it was. So we had like, um, at the beginning that the, the first U.S. boot touched down in Africa, we had seven ammunition factories in the nation cranking out ammunition and artillery shells. But wouldn't you know that five out of those seven were producing ammunition and artillery shells in calibers that the U.S. didn't use, in Russian calibers. And so all those factories were cranking out every f***ing bullet that the Russians fired against the Germans since practically the beginning of the war. To say that the Soviet Union couldn't have won without the United States support is the understatement of a century. So we didn't just spend all the money and crank out all the equipment that our team used. But think about it, we were cranking out a B-29 Flying Fortress every hour. Every hour of every day for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, a B-29 bomber was rolling off the assembly line. It's just a tremendous amount of capital outlay. And then when you factor in that, we've been doing that for long before we told anybody that we were going to enter the war, long before we told our public. We did war bigger than anybody has ever done war in history. You could probably add up all the money spent in every other war in the history of humanity and put it all together, and it wouldn't be the same as what we spent. So, if nations get really bad inflation and some nations that do war really hard get hyperinflation afterwards, how did we not get any? In fact, not only did we not get inflation, we got the greatest period of economic prosperity in the history of the country for about 20 years. And nobody's really been able to explain that. 